Hello Power Apps Makers, this is Ahmed Saleh again and today I have the follow-up video for this tutorial that we had last week and we talked about how we can refresh the underlying data uh, after we close a custom page. Uh, so in that scenario we had a custom page that we can open this custom page by using a custom buttons in, in the menu bar in a model driven app pages and that will open that custom page we will do some kind of integration between the underlining data and that custom page canvas app and then uh, from there we click a button that will close that custom page and go back to that main grid uh in 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 the table view or go into the main forum uh of a specific selected record in this video i will show you how we have done the javascript basically to um you know uh, implement the refresh uh once that dialogue is closed and uh, i have here two scenarios so i have when i open if we go actually to our app right here and as you can see here uh, let me actually get this a little bit smaller right here so if you can see this is my main grid right this is the grid that we are talking about so this is the order table right here order stable and uh, this is the main grid which is basically the active order or the active order in view that's the, the name of the view and this is the grid it's editable grid and uh, i have all these orders uh, some of them are shipped, some of them is not shipped. I'm going to go ahead and change this to actually not shipped. And uh, the, the scenario we have here for this custom page is when you select a record here and then, uh, okay, let me just try to select this again. Okay, yeah, now I select it. So I select this record now, it says not shipped. This is my custom command or my custom button here, right? And this is, this is the main grid uh, that we have this menu bar. I click on shipping. This is my custom page. This is a canvas app in that custom page. Obviously, when I selected that record, I clicked on the shipping custom button. Uh, I passed the record ID and I retrieved the data uh, for this specific record uh, from the Dataverse. Uh, some other information like the shipping information's tracking number. This is our game pulled actually from a SharePoint list that uh, has this uh, shipping information uh, so what I wanted to do is when I click on this button here for example update ship I want to actually change the shipping status so we will be able to change the shipping status on the dataverse table orders but also I would like to refresh without that refresh code that we are using uh, once the navigation happen basically once the navigation happen from this custom page back to the main uh, uh, grid view of this Modo Divin app. Once that navigation happened, there is a follow-up function in the JavaScript. So basically it will refresh that grid that we can see. So when I click actually update shipped or update shipment now here, as you can see, it came back, it's being refreshed. And, and this is because of the reason that we have, uh, if I go back and let's see, actually, I wanna go back to my web resource so this is the web resource that we have this is the web resource that hold this javascript code so i'm gonna go ahead and edit in classic and if i come here and try to edit this as you can see this is the function name that i have here uh, as you can see <clears throat> and then i have two variables or have two parameters that i'm passing to this function right so now let's talk about these two parameters so if i come here and I click in the order. This is the edit mode of the Modo Divin app. I have only one page here. It's the orders and I have this is the custom page, right? So I'm gonna, this is actually two pages. So I'm gonna click on these th uh, three dots here. I will edit the command. And then the first thing I wanna do is, obviously we have the main grid and we have the main form and we have subgrid view and associate view. We will cover these in a later videos. Today we are covering these two. So in the main grid, so basically the main grid, as we said, this is our main grid. So I want to just make sure that I have this app right here. So uh, actually, I don't need anything here, I guess. Um, so this is the app. So this is the main grid, right? This is this is exactly what we selected here. And I want to actually edit that button. Uh, in the description of this video, I have the full tutorial for how we create these custom pages, how we create these custom buttons. But here we just, you know, following up of the code of the refresh, right? 
So I'm going to hit click edit and that will take me uh, to the basically main grid uh, command bar uh, edits where I can add new buttons or I can actually edit my custom button right so this is my custom button right here as you can see this custom button has only one visible property that i'm using power fx with which is the visible property the reason for that is i want actually this button to be visible only if the selected number of records is one so if there is any more than one record is selected in that case so now if i have actually selected one record so let's just select one here i can see it if i selected another record it disappear if i go ahead select one record it's here two records disappear three records is not there it has to be one record selected and this is exactly what is happening right here in this uh i think yes that's the one here so this is this is the uh, visible uh property of this button now let's actually come to this one here so what we have here as you can see so what we want to focus on today right here so i want actually to show you the most important things is going to be that this first action there right here right this is number one so basically you have to select here we're going to have to select that run the javascript the second thing is actually you have to add your library so library is basically your web resource that we have right that's the library then after that i have to assign the parameters that i'm passing for this function right and and this is what we have here if we go back to this so as you can see this function actually is taking two parameters one is the grid context and this one is what we have here as the selected control now these there is a lot of these parameters right so uh, uh, how do i know what is doing what exactly i know that selected control is going to pass the form context so whatever control or whatever control is actually triggering uh, 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 this code is going to be passed to uh this uh, function right so and i have all this information in the uh, uh, blog post uh that i will reference into this video right here so and you will actually go there and you will actually find all this information under data retrieve from microsoft dynamic 365 application that may be passed as parameters and if you click on that link you have all this list of parameters right here so for this specific one we have the primary control it's an object referencing the control that had focus when the ripon command action is occurred right so this is what the all information about this primary control it will be passed if i select that parameter the second one in that case is going to be selected control selected items ids and this is basically wherever i select here it will actually pass these IDs, the good, basically the unique identifier of these records are going to be passed uh, along uh, to this function. Now, going back to the function, once I get this to, or what I do, regardless of what we are not talking about here, the XRM navigation, we already covered this in other videos, but the area where we actually doing the refresh is actually I'm using the grid context that refresh. So the grid context in this case is going to be the, as you can see here, uh, what we have here the selected control so the selected control it's actually different than primary control and you will find that the primary control is usually referring to a form so if 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 i'm actually i if i want to get the information of the form where this button was triggered so i will use the primary control but if, if this button actually was triggered from a page that has the grid the main grid or any other grid in that case if the control is a grid or subgrid then you will back you will pass the selected control and once i get the selected control right here i call the variable grid context so this is my selected control my selected grid uh, and then uh, what i do with this is basically has one method that i can use it's grid context that refresh perfect selected id is being used in different things and i will have a surprise for you we're not going to announce it now but we are working for something so cool for the business users the new app makers who are excited to try dataverse and model driven apps but are a little bit hesitant when they hear us talking about javascript and uh, as you can see this is like few lines of code that you can use in too many use cases uh, the surprise for you here and i'm gonna just show you this just as a surprise so as you can see here this is javascript function builder i was still working on this developing so basically what you have to do is uh, you will know exactly what you need to do 
and you will see like we have images right here and right there to show you exactly what you need to get and you just have to put name of things function name for example right here right this is one of them the second one is actually you want to select where this dialog is going to open right and then uh, the size of that dialog compared to the full screen right and then the title of this right that's that's also we need that one here and after you did all this here here this one here for example is telling us that enter the logical name of the custom page will you know show you exactly how to get that name uh, of that custom page you created right and then you enter that oh this is my custom uh, uh, custom page right here I'm gonna just show you this to get you excited to be waiting for us to do this right and once you've done all these you know inputs just these inputs right here that you have to do you don't have to know JavaScript at all so this is my function name I'm gonna call it uh, my I just call it here yeah let's just put it my test sorry I have this mic in my face so that's why okay let's just call it my test oops okay horrible right perfect and uh, i have the dialogue i have the main form custom page and if i select for example this is the main grid that's the main if i want to actually have the main grid uh or if i want to have the form okay so i don't have the code for the form yet it's just the main grid so far i have it somewhere else but again as you can see here selected this and here you go so this is basically the code to open a side dialogue where if i want to open the full page you have another code right here and it show us exactly how it looked like as you can see here center is going to be look like this and if you want to actually open the side dialogue uh, it will be something uh actually like like this right here perfect but again you have the code copy and paste save it in a text file export it as the javascript and boom you're done after you put it as a web resource and you don't have to worry about exactly what happened here you just understand these features and this is exactly what i'm trying to explain today here so just prepare you for this beautiful uh, app that we will put for you guys to use uh, in the future we still work on it and uh, we will definitely uh, announce um, this uh, sometime uh, very soon okay so this is for the main grid so now the other one is is going to be the same thing and this is the other web resource i'm using and this is basically to refresh when we actually click on the record go inside the form right so in this form here like i also have shipping uh, a custom pay, a custom button so i click on this one and also i click here and this is will trigger basically the, that refresh function right so if i go back to this so i'm gonna actually go ahead and back to the edit right and i want to actually go and in that case uh, let me actually just close this it will take time it's easier to just come here and do it again edit edit command bar and again remember this time is going to be the main form so i'm tackling actually the main form command bar and i have this shipping uh but that i have <coughs> yes i want to override and let's get this here and as you can see here what we have here also we're going to have our library as you can see here we have uh, uh sorry this is the action so the action will happen when this button is clicked is going to be to run a javascript what is the library basically remember the library is just a file is a text file you save as a javascript extension gs right you upload or you create a web resource and then you select that file right in the future hopefully in the near future you will have to do you, you don't have to worry about how you're going to write that javascript right and then after that you select here you have you add the function name obviously that you have and then the parameter here we only pass in one parameter as you can see it's the primary control and the primary control is basically referring to the form control that we are passing here going back to the code uh, let me just close this one here and as you can see here this is the the primary control <coughs> using that primary control i can basically get the entity name if i need the entity name for example in my code uh, if i need the record id i can also use that record id which is the GUID of the record you know you know the the the, the dataverse table form it's basically a form of multiple fields you customize you build that form it will also it will only show you one record and any other related records from other tables if you have relationships in place right that's awesome and then again we are focusing on this function so after this 
dialog open or the custom page open you did whatever you do in your canvas app and you closed and you go back to the form what's going to happen i want this to happen so i want that page context basically this is to show us that this is the control that triggered this javascript code i want this control dot data dot its data to be refreshed that's exactly how you read javascript here <laughs> The other one is page context dot get control. I'm getting the timeline because I just have a time happen a timeline here, and this timeline basically also a dynamic thing. This is going to be the weekend video is how from Canvas app uh, in a custom page or embedded Canvas app into a modern driven app how we can add tasks, notes, attachments. Everything is going to happen in the in that Canvas app in that custom page, and when you click close or you close that dialogue, everything is updated to you right here. <laughs> so this is basically the two things that get actually the data and the contr underlying controls to be refreshed once you close your custom page. Again, all these references is gonna be in this blog post in the references. I have some information about the form context grid and all these has actually sample codes as well. So you can also copy and paste and just change uh, your references, your names, and things like that. Uh, uh, and, and here, this is also the last link. It's actually, it, it's a very good uh, documentation if you want to bookmark this. Just, there is a ton of them, actually. I haven't tested all of them, and I, I, I don't know most of them exactly what it's doing, but it's great explanation. Uh, you know, like if it's deprecated, like this one is being deprecated. Uh, uh, you know, uh, and it's, it's really nice, actually, to have, a, you know, a list of all these parameters that you can use. Uh, also here in the blog post, you know, I have I have just the screenshots of these code and uh, I have the video of how we actually uh, how, how it run. But this video I'm doing now is just to get a little bit deeper for how we can actually do these things. And again, imagine how many dialogue, how many custom page you can use in modern driven app to just uh, uh, take the end user into one focus area uh, to do like a series of certain actions um you know and they don't have to worry to jump between tabs or go going from one page to another they can do everything over there and you have the power of canvas app actually you know the full customization and the full data integrations here you only work with dataverse in mode driven app but over there when you are actually just sending this one piece of information uh which is the GUID the record ID and then you have that GUID you can get wherever foreign keys where primary keys that you use to get data from SharePoint from SQL from Oracle wherever data source over 270 you can do that in the canvas app so I will see you on uh Saturday again for an, on another video again when that one we will cover this timeline so from the canvas app in the custom page how do we update our timelines notes tasks and other stuff that we can actually do in the uh, timeline uh, i hope that you enjoyed the video if you did please like subscribe and share this video and i will see you next time